find that. Did he just hit on me? Does anybody know? <laughs> I feel like I, that was a hit. Uh, okay. We've got another great interview for you guys. Tom Shadiak is a writer, director, and producer. Yeah, you might know a couple of movies he's written and directed, like Ace Ventura, Pet Detective, and Nutty Professor. He's also directed Liar Liar, Patch Adams, Bruce Almighty, and Evan Almighty. Um, I think some Americans might have seen your movies. I, yes, I believe they a few have. Yes, <laughs> I thank right. you and I owe them very much. Um, and uh, you also uh, did the documentary I Am, which I saw recently, which is amazing, and I want to talk to you about thank you, a thank little you. bit yeah. more later. Yeah, a little bit of a turn, but yeah. Yeah, thanks. no question about that. Yeah. We'll talk about why you turned, too. So now, uh, obviously, Ace Ventura is an enormous hit. How did that come about? Uh, the script, which had been around for about 10 years, comes along. It's Ace Ventura, Pet Detective. Oh, but really? it wasn't what you see today. It wasn't the story that you see where the he's a she and all that stuff. Right. And uh, I met on it. I got this crazy idea uh, with a friend of mine, Eugene Leibowitz, and we, we rewrote it and hired this guy who was an unknown at the time. He was the white guy on In Living Color, mm -hmm. Jim Carrey. And a lot of people thought we were crazy because he'd done four or five films before and he hadn't quite busted out. And, and you know, it became what it was, and Jim just skyrocketed. When Ace Ventura broke out, was it totally organic, or was there some like marketing thing, et cetera, that wound up, or just people saw it and they were like, "Damn, that's funny." And that's it. It's just it makes you laugh. In fact, when we were doing it, the studio thought it was like going to be a huge bomb, and that we were going to go straight to video. Um, nobody knew what we had. Jim and I just knew we were laughing a lot. We picked a tone that was obviously over the top. It was a cartoon come to life. And it was just basically really funny. It was kind of like an ode to joy, and, and people responded. So let's talk about the turn. Tell yeah. me about what happened with the accident and, and what that led to. I got in a bike accident, for those who don't know. I nearly died, I had a concussion, turned into post-concussion syndrome, a brutal condition. Some people commit suicide on it, athletes struggle with this. It's really very, very challenging. And I didn't think I was gonna make it. And so I simply said, if this is the last act, if this is it, this is my last chapter, what do I wanna say? I'm a filmmaker, do I want to say anything? And I decided to make a movie about what I had discovered and to talk to people uh, to see if the principles I had discovered meant anything at all. So I talked to some of the leaders uh, you know, in different disciplines and said, you know, let's have a conversation about what's really going on in the world, uh, what I'm participating in, some of the ills, and how do we get out of this mess that we're in? What happens that, that people get, so, it becomes such a dark place and they think like suicide's the only way out? What do you experience? What do you go through? Well, you know, it's, it's different for different people, but it, it's basically like a computer that no longer functions. Your brain essentially being a computer that takes in stimuli and knows what to do with it. It no longer knows what to do with it. So these lights would be very painful. Any sound would, would be like a kind of torture, like a, a, a high-pitched sound that for you is just a clanking plate. For me, it was, it was death. Uh -huh. So it, it, it's a very isolating disease. You find people have to check into hotel rooms, they have to leave their families, they're right. socialized behind. They have to basically shut the computer down and n nothing helps but time. And it's, the brain is very slow in healing in most cases. It can heal, but it takes a lot of time. So you just feel alone and you don't have human interaction. I didn't, I didn't even use a cell phone for three years, which actually turned wow. out to be a plus. Um, but, but it's a very isolating, debilitating disease. And because it's painful, some people have severe headaches. I just felt like the emergency broadcast system was in my head 24 hours a day. If I put that in your head for a minute, it would be painful. If I said, now it's never gonna go away, you would be, you can become despondent. The main question I, I wanna ask you is, what did you discover? You asked mm. all these incredibly smart people yeah. about life, what's the essence of life, what did you find out? Well, you know, we have these theories, and I believed in these theories in my heart, in that intuitive place that we're all brothers and sisters, that everything's connected, all those things. But what I didn't know is there was a ton of, excuse me, scientific evidence to back that up. From the field of quantum physics to uh, uh, of cellular biology, uh, to what they're discovering now in positive psychology, there is a ton of scientific evidence to prove that what our saints and sages and mystics have intuited all along is actually the meat and marrow of reality. To me, it's simply, it's simply semantics. I use the word God. I'm not afraid to use the word God, but I don't believe in the guy with a beard. God to me is another word for mystery, source, like how did it all start? What's making me speak? What is that thing, right? Mm -hmm. I call it, just call it mystery, mm -hmm. right? So you go through these epiphanies, you, in the movie you talk to these incredibly smart people from all these different fields. 
after having gone through this and you get rid of your big houses and your excess and all that stuff, mm -hmm. and are you happier now? Uh, yes, absolutely. No question. And happiness is just a measure of a system working well. And I think we're designed to work in concert with other people, uh, in community, uh, in service, to feel a part of something greater than ourselves. And so I'm doing those things, and so consequently, yeah, I'm much, much happier. Uh, do you still uh, go to Hollywood parties, or are you done with that? Uh, do you have any guilty pleasures? Uh, do I go to Hollywood parties? I've been recently to a couple Hollywood parties and I found out something very, very interesting, which is uh, they used to not interest me because I don't think I was as authentic or interesting. So I really don't care about grosses and what movies are making, it doesn't interest me. I like this conversation. So now that I've become more of this conversation, when I go to Hollywood parties, this conversation comes to me. I think if I stood there and said, I'm right, the square footage that I've chosen is right. My lifestyle is the right lifestyle and you're wrong. I don't think my friends would really respond to that. That's interesting. I got to work on that too. There's a lot of <laughs> okay. I'm right and you're wrong on the Young Turks. But okay. All right. Tom Shady, great conversation. Thank you, really brother. appreciate Thanks, it. Man. Thanks for having right. me. Thank you. Appreciate it.